Hey guys, I'm Will from Tested. And I'm Norm from Tested. Uh, we're outdoors today on Treasure Island outside of San Francisco. There's a giant statue behind us. With a giant lady's ass right but there. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about what I have in my hand right now and what's actually shooting this video right now. This is DJI's Phantom 2 Vision Plus quadcopter. Uh, now, we've flown Phantom 2 Vision quadcopters in the past. You, you flew one inside a big mesh net at CES this year. Uh, but there's something new that's happening on well that model and this model as well. Right, and you can see it in this model right now. Uh, DJI makes the Phantom. If you've watched that Superman with a GoPro video on YouTube, it was shot with one of these. They have the Phantom 2 model, where, which people can buy for around $700, and you can mount your own GoPros to. The Vision, which they announced earlier last year, uh, had a camera, but this model has a gimbal. Well, so, Norm, what's a gimbal? So a gimbal is a stabilization system. There are three motors, the three-axis gimbal. So if you look at this camera right here, I can move the quadcopter Ooh. as if it's flying in the air, and that camera will stay still. The end result is that you get a really stable-looking shot that looks more like it was done on a boom or a you know giant film crew type thing than it does on you know a, a helicopter. And so obviously it's made so you can fly around and shoot videos, shoot photos, and there's a lot of cool new features on the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. Uh, you have the transmitter on you right now. I'm not flying this one right though. You're not flying no, this no. one. Thank goodness, because yeah. I would be very scared. The, the good news is we have Eric Cheng from DJI here to teach me how to fly. You've, you've been flying for about a week now. Yeah, and, and so we want to get you some hands-on time with this. We're going to run through some of these quick specs. Uh, it's one of the most stable and just easy to learn quadcopters I've ever flown. So, so yeah, I mean, the thing you said before was uh, that, that this is to those helicopters you get at the mall, like a, you know, like a 747 is to a paper airplane. Yes, um, this is something, you don't need a license to fly it, but definitely some training is recommended. Uh, you can notice that there is an iPhone attached to the transmitter. Okay. That's because there is a, a signal relay. You can actually get direct video feed. That's how we're shooting this video right now. So in front of the transmitter, there's a range extender, which takes the Phantom 2 Vision Plus up to about 700 meters away, maybe even 800 meters by the time this comes out. Okay. That's like half a mile. That's a long way. That's a real long distance. Yeah. Of course, that's under optimal conditions. Right, line of sight, all line the normal stuff applies, no thunderstorms, whatever. But over a 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection, mm -hmm. video is piped from that camera to the range extender and then over Wi-Fi to the camera, to the iPhone here. And then once you get it down here, you can use all sorts of different devices. You can hook up a head-mounted display, you can use a different yep. monitor, Works all with sorts of Android stuff. Android phone, and it's, it's, it's directly above us. It's directly above us. This reminds me of the Terminator. Oh my goodness, it's so amazing. So with the iPhone here, you can actually get a lot of telemetry data. You can see how high it's going. Right now it's about, you know, 10 feet, 15 feet above us. This can go up to a thousand feet high. A thousand Easy. feet is really high. That's really high. And I think FAA guidelines only allow these kind of quadcopters to go up to 400 feet high. That seems more reasonable. That's reasonable and plenty if you want to get some good, great aerial footage. So uh, on the control front, the controller is much more simple than your traditional RC aircraft. You have two sticks. Uh, this one controls the, the throttle, which is relative. Unlike the quadcopters you get at the mall, where you have to kind of find the hover port point yourself, uh, this one actually will go up and down. Neutral is hovering, and the copter is smart enough to stay in one location. Right. This is the big. This is the big advancement. There's GPS built in. If you look at the back, there are flashing lights. These turn green, and that means there's a GPS lock on the GPS satellites. That means we even take it up to 400 or 1,000 feet high. It'll try to stay exactly. It'll fight the wind. Yeah. It'll stay exactly in that position, and you can think, take it all the way back down, and it'll land within 2.5 meters. Yeah, have you tried that? Did you go straight yes. up and then come straight back straight down? Straight up and straight down. It's like lunar lander, but with the quadcopter. I bet you have a video of that. I do. And also, with the GPS, you can actually turn off the transmitter. If you lose connection or it loses power, or low power, it'll try to find its original spot and hover about 20 meters above where it thinks it launched. So you don't have to worry about running out of radio range and then it crashing in somebody's backyard. It'll at least come back to more or less where it started. Yep. Uh, the other innovative thing with DJI's Phantom quadcopters mm -hmm. is the battery. It's a okay. smart battery, really easy to charge. It takes about an hour, in my experience, to charge fully. It's a 5,200 milliamp battery. And I got about a little over 20 minutes of flight time. The app does give you a warning at 30% battery. It buzzes real loud, so you know that around 17, 18 minutes of video recording to come back. And that's actually a lot for one of these quadcopters. That seems like a long time. Like, yeah. And, and it's a, it, while it's not difficult to fly, I would think 17 or 18 minutes of flying would be kind of exhausting mentally. Like, yes. at the end of that, you're ready to take a break. It, it, but I've not wanted nothing more since getting this than to take it out and fly it every single day. So enough talking about the quadcopter. Let's get the actual flying. I want to learn to fly. Let's teach you how to fly. Eric's here to teach us. So let's get the flying.
Okay, that was a blast. It was uh, amazing. This is a super, dude, I can't. You're sweating. You came from back. Excitement. You came back and you said, "This is a thing that I am really excited about." Mm-hmm. After you'd flown this for a, basically a weekend, mm-hmm. and um, I totally get it. I'm a hundred percent in. I, I don't think there's a piece of technology uh, since the iPhone and the Oculus that I've been more excited about than gyro stabilized, GPS stabilized quadcopters. Yeah. So. I've flown some RC stuff. I've driven a lot of RC cars. Yeah, um, we had the small Helimax 1SQ, mm-hmm. Nano Quad, and the Mini Quad, which, Hydro Quads. Which, which actually, that Nano Quad, I think, was a great way to learn flying. Yeah, like, I, I wouldn't recommend spending $1,000 on a quadcopter today if you have no experience no. with quadcopters. How, even if you've flown, you know, a RC helicopter or an airplane. How, the Nano Quad's what, 50 bucks? You can get one for 100 bucks. Yeah, 100 50, bucks. 50, 100 bucks. Okay. So that was, I, I had played with that some in the office, tested it out, learned to kind of do basic flying. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had a basic expectation for like maneuverability and level of control and stuff like that you have with a quadcopter. But actually going out in what was, what I, like was a windy day for RC stuff. Right. It's unbelievable. And right by right by the water. So that's it's high scary wind, stuff. Very scary. Yeah. Um, what you might have seen uh, in our video montage mm-hmm. is just how stable it is going straight up and down. It's it's more so unlike one of those one of the whether the toy copters that you get from the mall or the nano cop nano quad any of that stuff. The thing that's interesting about this is the controls. The default position for the sticks. Basically, the, the, the quadcopter, the Phantom, hovers in place. Yeah. And it tries to maintain its position, not just altitude-wise, but also in, a, in lateral space as yes. well. And it seems to do that within, let's say, five feet at the outside. And that was with lots of wind. It, it resists wind. And one test that we did is, as it's flying, you know, if you get to your height, you can actually, as it's flying, hold on to here. I don't recommend no, doing don't it. No, don't do that. But you can hold on and pull it, and it will resist you pulling as if wind was pu- dragging Eric in one direction. pulled it 15 feet, and it flew back to where it and was as if it, it was on a rubber band. And it would come back, you know, if it's 1,000 feet up in the air, 500 feet up in the air. You can't grab it then. You can't grab it. The wind will grab it, and it will fight yeah. back and try to find its place. Well, and the, and the thing that, you, you know, you don't realize, on the, since we live on the ground, is that at different altitudes, the wind's going to be blowing in different directions. And, and like, that stuff's really hard to account mm-hmm. for. Um, this simplifies that a lot. And the thing, the thing that amazed me, I've flown, like I said, I've flown RC planes, never helicopters, but RC planes before. The controls for this are much, much simpler to yeah. the point that I, I think you could probably hand this to anybody who's flown one of those small helicopters and maybe they won't be great, but they're not going to destroy it. And I, I didn't feel like when I, as I have with RC planes and helicopters, I didn't feel like I was on the cusp of a crash at any given moment. Right. And, and you know, don't panic always when you're flying these things. Uh, we gave it to Joey, who'd never flown one of these before. Mm-hmm. And within about 10 minutes, he was comfortable at least taking it up high in the air and, and doing some maneuvers. You know, like the, now, it's worth mentioning, it's not going to save you from being stupid. No. You had a close call with yeah, some power so lines. Don't take a flight next to close power lines. Right. Power lines will interfere with the 2.4 gigahertz for the video reception, yeah. for sure. Um, so you want to fly an open field or find a good park. And this is the kind of thing that tr- attracts a lot of attention. So taking it out even to a public space, yeah. kids are going to want to run underneath it. They want to feel the air. That's not necessarily the best place to get practice it's if you're just good. getting started with this. Um, but at this point... After spending an afternoon, we spent probably, what, two hours out there, mm-hmm. and I flew for probably 30, 30 or 40 mm-hmm. minutes, it seems like. I would feel pretty comfortable taking it to the beach, for like a yeah. big wide beach, not a little narrow beach, but the beach and flying from there. The amazing thing about it is, is we got we, we got unbelievable aerial footage yeah. from like the kind of stuff that in the 20 years ago you'd have had to rent a small airplane like a Cessna or, or, a, or a Piper to go up and get, and, and 10 years ago you'd have to get a balloon rig or something expensive. And, and, and two, it's years ago, two years ago, when we had quadcopters, it was really just a hobbyist um, activity. You need to do a lot of soldering, hack these kits together. You had to build it from right. pieces. This is a kit that comes out of box Ready, basically ready to fly. Charging the battery, installing the props, screwing on the props are replaceable, and it's it's super. The software stable. is already loaded. Yeah. Um, so the, it's worth mentioning the software is a really key part of this whole thing. Like the software is what keeps it in the is, is what lets it fight the wind by using the GPS lock. The software kind of it seems like it's you know the software has different modes. I know. 
Um, I don't know a lot about the advanced mode, but we did, like, we're using, I guess, what's the basically the noob mode. Yeah, so the Phantom 2 uh, Vision Plus and the Vision comes with basically the default is a noob mode. You can download some desktop software and unlock your advanced modes. Um, it's not like a, some dumb game or anything like that. No, no, right? no, no. Okay. You, just, you just switch it on, and then that allows you on the transmitter to use these switches. Okay. Um, so you can do, like, vector-based flying, so you can make it fly in circles really easily. And a lot, a lot of advanced stuff, people who have the Phantom ones and twos are you familiar with. So one of the things I noticed is in the noob mode at least when you're when you're trying to like when you're changing altitude and you want to do like lateral traversal, sometimes you have to kind of choose one or the other. It doesn't let you necessarily, is, is that what we're talking no, about I, I, necessarily? Or? There's like ways you can lock on to directions as you turn to okay. do like perfect circle strafing. Um, as a newbie starting, you're definitely fixed in the one direction of movement. It's tough to figure out two directions of movement, especially uh, when you don't know the orientation. Uh, you're not as familiar with locking onto the orientation. And also, if it gets high enough that you're not even able to spot it and you have yeah. to fly with the, the video. So that's something we wanted to show also was the, the app and the video. Yeah. Um, so I have the app right now pulled up on, on the iPhone, and it's connected over Wi-Fi. As we explained earlier, uh, right now, uh, this Wi-Fi is connected to the range extender, which is right behind you on the transmitter, which lets this Vision 2 Plus go up to about 800 meters uh, away from you, okay. uh, line of sight, which that's like half a mile. And in, in reality... Like I got the the dro the quadcopter up to 700, 650, mm -hmm. 700 feet, and start, the video signal started dropping out. Right. So right. Um, the the range extender is just for the iPhone telemetry and the video signal, right? Yes. It's not for the control. Right. That's um, a five gigahertz signal. It's, the range is pretty far for that. Okay. So one's the the video stuff is two point four. The main control is five mm -hmm. gigahertz. Uh, I did notice when I got the drone above like five hundred fifty, six hundred feet. Uh, it 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 started to the control signal started to drop out. It could have been because of power lines and all the stuff that was around us. But and the good thing is, of course, has the GPS. It knows, and we've we've tested it. Yeah. Turning off the transmitter, if the power goes out, it will come back at altitude. So if it's at 500 feet, it will find your G, uh, where it's, uh, where it launched from or where mm -hmm. things it launched from at that altitude, and then descend down to about that 20 meters. So like it doesn't have obstacle avoidance in that mode. So if you're, there's a building on either side. It won't know where to go, right? But but it'll stay at it'll, altitude. It'll get there and then just come straight down, right? Or if it's below that, it'll go up to twenty meters and then go up to got it. Go to the GPS. So let's look at the app right now. Okay, um, I have it connected over here, so it's connected to the local Wi-Fi, and the, the Phantom Wi-Fi. This is running on your phone, but they also have it for for I, an, iOS and iOS Android. And Android. Uh, there's some quick settings here. I think this is a beta version, yes. just for what it's worth. Um, and then so you have some basically you can turn on the low battery warning. The whole thing will buzz red when it's at about thirty okay. percent battery that seems um, like a good thing to have and then but what's really interesting is the camera here the camera controls so we have a, a little bit of Wi-Fi interference but should be loading properly and there yeah, it goes that's our office yeah that's our office this is actually what the Phantom Vision Phantom 2 Vision Plus is seeing right now uh, there are two settings for video quality you can do a 64 80 or a lower 360 by 240 either okay. 30 FPS or 15 FPS depending on how much bandwidth you want to use I have the highest video quality setting right now this is just between the camera on the drone and the mm -hmm. and the and the iPhone right. but it's recording at 1080p it's recording at 1080p okay. 30 FPS you can go up to 60 60 FPS if you want 1080i. It seemed like kind of a low bit rate. Um, it's about a uh, GoPro half, type. It's half the bit rate of the GoPro Hero 3. It's about uh, 15 uh, megabits per second. So that's going to be like just ballpark. That's going to be around what the last gen Hero 2s were. Yeah, about the last gen Hero 2s. Okay. Uh, I did some image quality. Uh, comparison test. The mm -hmm. Hero 3 is much better. I think there's definitely some edge enhancements, some more um, image artifacts. They aren't doing image stabilization on the camera, though. It, the, no. All the stabilization happens because of the gimbal. All happens because of this three-axis gimbal that thing's staying amazing. steady. Um, and one of the things that they said that they the, their gimbal design versus some of the gimbal designs that they've seen for the for the GoPros mm -hmm. is that because they're doing their own camera and they're able to move the stuff that's stabilized out from the actual control circuitry for the camera means that that it's not using anywhere near as much battery. Absolutely. Um, which which seems good. I mean, I know Eric, who was out with us when we were flying, said that sometimes you, you'd see like 15 minutes or 10 minutes on the, the early GoPro mounts right, with right. the older family. And this is definitely getting up to that 20 minute mark. Yeah. Um, the signal is spotty in, in our office right now because there's so much interference. This is a table. bad yeah. Wi-Fi environment. Who right. knew? But if you look at the bottom, you can see there's altitude marks right now. It knows that we're 
I think we're about 30 feet off the ground. This is from the floor ground level. Yeah. Um, is, it, is this from, are you sure it's from ground level? I bet it's using, it doesn't have GPS now, does it? There is um, a... connected to seven GPS satellites, as indicated by so here. So 31 feet is probably about right, given where we are in the city and yeah. that we're on the second floor. Um, it's The speed is it's great. The, the two best telemetry things are speed and, uh, and altitude. The altitude, I'm, I'm looking at that all the time when I'm flying out in the open. If I'm about 200 feet, that's a good, that's a good, uh, a good altitude. Um, and so, well, I was going to say, one of the things that was surprising to me using this that I didn't expect at all is that, uh, you know, when you use normal RC stuff, you actually watch the, the, the plane or the helicopter or whatever. With this, I watched the, the helicopter, the quadricopter while I was taking off and landing and, and low and close. Yes. But most of the time I was just watching the screen playing it like a video game. Yeah, it was relatively low latency. Mm -hmm. uh, even when you're running at like 15 FPS, um, playback on the the uh, the app. Uh, it's fast enough that you can use it to guide your flying. It's it's. I mean, you want to make slow, deliberate movements with this anyway. So that combined with the, even though there is a little tiny bit of latency, it wasn't it wasn't a problem. All right. So one of the cool things is I can actually adjust the uh, the camera, the tilt of the camera. So you can't adjust pan. Can you adjust zoom? You can't adjust zoom. Okay, but you can you can tilt up and down, which is kind of all you need because you're going to pan by moving the, mm -hmm. the quadricopter this way and you can do all sorts of cool sweeps and stuff. But look, look, Norm, you're moving the camera. So if you go back to me, I'm going to hit this button right here. That's the accelerometer or the gyroscope control. And I'm going to lift this up camera. and on Will, yeah. you can see that the camera is definitely tilting. As it's I moving. The camera is moving. And of course, I can also move it and it, it stays stable. I mean, obviously, you don't usually go at a 90-degree angle with this guy, but um, it works surprisingly well. The video, the, the thing that amazed me about the video is how stable it looks. Yeah. Even, even like, on the videos of your first test flights, the, the footage was super stable. There's a couple of tricks that Eric taught us that I assume that they have, like, instructional videos for on their site mm -hmm. that are basically, like... You know, the, the places that you get in trouble are when you hit something with the propellers, obviously, and that most often happens when you take off and land. So when you take off, you want to commit. When you land, you want to come in very softly and then commit to landing. Right. Um, and but I after, other than that... I wouldn't fly indoors either. Indoors seems... What did you do to your laptop, Norm? I destroyed the keyboard on my laptop. And you're going to fix that? Yes, I'm going to fix all the okay. keys on my laptop. But the props... Uh, Eric told us that, you know, he's put his finger up in here as the props are spinning. Yeah. Um, and got, you know, blood blister. That sounds unpleasant. That sounds... Very unpleasant. I'm not going to test that. I think we should test that right I'm now. I'm not going to test I'll it. I'll put my finger in this side if you put I, your I finger could, in that no, side. No, no, no. Let's not do that. Um, you know, you owe me $400 for Bitcoin money. It's, it, Take it, the hit, Chan. I'm not going to do it. Um, so definitely flight outside. Unlike, you know, the, uh, the Parrot Air drone, there isn't yeah. a casing to protect to, to shield the, the props. It's, what's the weather resistance like on this? Can you fly it in the rain? You can fly it in light rain. Because uh, the motors don't care. Right. The motors don't care. There are some electronics here that will care. Uh, in the there are vents okay. right here. If rain goes through the vents, that's bad. Um, then that's bad. But very very light rain. It is still technically fog. You can absolutely fly it in fog. Okay. What fog about is fine. what about? Um, of course, fog. You're not going to be able to see it. Right. And visibility is an important thing because you want to see this light, this green light in the yeah. back. That tells you not only that you have GPS lock, but where your orientation is. The green toward you means that the, the nose is going to be away from you. The so red these is red stripes are the you. front of it. The, the battery is the back. Mm -hmm. um, that, makes, that makes sense. Look, that's one of those things you picked up immediately. If you've ever driven any kind of RC stuff and you, you're able to make that trans... Like there's a moment when you're driving RC cars or flying planes or whatever where you have... Where you where you you lose the ability, you gain the ability to to control from the vehicle's perspective at any time, right? Um, and I, I, I think that'll come very quickly with this, more so than other stuff. Uh, I did try, try flying it at night and recording some video Ooh. at night. The night image quality is not good at all. Okay, um, you can make out city street lights, but they're kind of hazy and blurry, and everything is high noise, high grain. Uh, in the image comparison, uh, between, was this on a moonlit night or a dark night? Just Do you a remember? regular dark night. Okay. Um, uh, an image comparison between the GoPro Hero 3 mm -hmm. and uh, the, the built-in camera here, um, having a 60 FPS in the GoPro Hero 3 at 1080p makes a big difference. Um, I wouldn't use this as we did in the start of this video as our primary camera for 
every video. It is a great secondary camera to catch, you know, explosions, catch cool or to car set up driving establishing scenes, shots, establishing or all that shots. Kind of stuff. So great for these establishing shots. Um, the other thing that I can imagine, like my my parents used to be have an auction company, and mm -hmm. we were all the time. They were all the time renting like little airplanes, flying over top of big plots of land, taking aerial photographs yep. with like an eighty two hundred zoom. I have to imagine that realtors everywhere are going bonkers for these guys. Realtors, uh, surveyors, mm -hmm. anything having to do, any 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 photography that requires high altitude. Yeah, uh, there's gonna be a big industry, I think, of people just using drones for that kind of stuff. Um, so so when you buy this, if you buy the one with the gimbals, I mean, there's th I think three models now, yeah. or is the middle one going away? Uh, there's gonna be three models. Uh, technically, a fourth model, which is like the Phantom One. Okay. Um, in terms of the Phantom Two family, there is the Phantom Two, seven hundred dollars. Um, that has no, no camera. Map. No gimbal. You can buy your own GoPro mount. You can buy okay. your own GoPro gimbal. Uh, there's the Phantom 2 uh, Vision, mm -hmm. which we saw at CES. That one has a camera, but no gimbal. That's $1,200. I expect that price to fall pretty soon after this is announced. Okay. Is it the it same kind of out. camera as this, or is it? It's the same kind of camera. Okay. Um, and then uh, just the electronics are moved a little right. bit. To, to Balanced stuff, up. I guess. And then this model, um, at the time recording this video, we don't know what the MSRP is, uh, but what we were told is that it would be under $1,500. Okay. That's that's their their target. Um, if you buy this and you decide you want to upgrade the camera at some point, are they going to have camera upgrades? I have Do no we know? idea. No. Like it, it looks like the mount is such that you could take this off right. and hook on your own GoPro mount. You'd probably have to change some electronics, yeah. or maybe not have a smart, maybe not have the, all the video control and stuff like mm -hmm. that. If you did that. Um, but I mean, it looks like a, a platform that's open for kind of extensible right. use. Right. Um, and I know, especially on the control side, you can do all sorts of cool stuff like hook up the goggles and you know, use a modified Oculus Rift or, or any number of different things. Yeah, something that we want uh, to try get, in the future. There's a lot of, yeah. I mean, we've barely scratched the surface of what you can do with this, both yeah. in, from a cinematographic standpoint and also from just a hacking and experimenting standpoint. Um, and this really is a platform for, for cool stuff in the I, future. I'm, I'm really excited to see after we get some more hours on this to move into the different control mechanisms and see what we can do with the more advanced flight modes. And, and just kind of take it places with us and see what we can do. We'll need a so. new sign in the back of the office. Days since our last crash. How many propellers? Phantom. How many props? How, how many, many props? Left? How many props Zero. do we have right now? We have eight props right now. We have eight props. How much do props cost? Uh, not too much. Uh, I think like, like 10, 20, 20 bucks, bucks uh, for, for a set. set. Of all and four? I think or around there. The okay. I'm not exactly sure, but the battery is 160 bucks if you want a new battery. Okay, so battery, you get about... They say 25 minutes. We found 20, minutes. 20 I, minutes. I'm assuming that varies based on how aggressively you're flying and stuff like that. Um, about an hour to charge. About an hour to charge. Mm -hmm. You can transfer photos and videos while flying over to your phone. I wouldn't recommend That's that. Gonna That's going to eat your battery. Eat your battery, and it takes a long time. Um, we found uh, that the battery wouldn't actually charge with a cheap car inverter. Okay. Um, the the interesting thing about these batteries is they're really high density. So the re one of the reasons they're expensive is I think they put the electronics, the charger electronics, on the actual battery instead of the charger. Mm -hmm. So you have you're less likely to a ruin your battery, b blow up your battery, yes, c all that stuff. So and and you said that they're five hundred bucks. Uh, the battery is one hundred sixty. One hundred sixty bucks. bucks. Yeah, that's not too is, bad. That's not too bad. If you're going to spend you know over a thousand dollars on a quadcopter, you want to have at least one. If you battery. buy three of them. Three of the batteries, then you can be flying constantly. Basically. Yeah. So um, I guess that'll do it for, for us. Yeah. This, this is amazing. I, this I, is amazing. We're going to see if we can use this in our future videos mm -hmm. any, when appropriate. But uh, look out for some inside cool Adam's cave. Shots. But maybe outside yeah. around the area in the neighborhood. The general vicinity of Adam's cave. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Be careful with the drone, Norm. Be careful with the drone. Norm, be careful with the drone. Norm. Uh, you know, like a 747 is to a paper airplane. Yes, um, this is something, you don't need a license to fly it, but definitely some training is recommended. Uh, you can notice that there is an iPhone attached to the transmitter. Okay. That's because there is a, a signal relay. You can actually get direct video feed. That's how we're shooting this video right now. So in front of the transmitter, there's a range extender which takes the Phantom 2 Vision Plus up to about 700 meters away, maybe even 800 meters by the time this comes out. Okay. That's like half a mile. That's a long way. That's a real long distance. Yeah. Of course, that's under optimal conditions. Right, line of sight, all line the normal stuff applies, no thunderstorms, whatever. But over a 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection, mm -hmm. video is piped from that camera to the range extender and then over Wi-Fi to 
to the camera, to the iPhone here. And then once you get it down here, you can use all sorts of different devices. You can hook up a head-mounted display, you can use a different yep. monitor, all sorts of Android stuff. Android phone, and it's, it's, it's directly above us. It's directly above us. This reminds me of the Terminator. Oh my goodness, it's so amazing. So with the iPhone, stay exactly, it'll fight the wind. Yeah. It'll stay exactly in that position, and you can take it, take it all the way back down, and it'll land within 2.5 meters. Yeah, have you tried that? Did you go straight yes. up and then come straight back straight down? Straight up and straight down. It's like Lunar Lander, but with the quad I bet you have a video of that. I do. And also, with the GPS, you can actually turn off the transmitter. If you lose connection or it loses power, or low power, it will try to find its original spot and hover about 20 meters above where it thinks it launched. So you don't have to worry about running out of radio range and then it crashing in somebody's backyard. It'll at least come back to more or less where it started. Yep. Uh, the other innovative thing with DJI's Phantom Quadcopters mm -hmm. is the battery. It's a okay. smart battery, really easy to charge. It takes about an hour, in my experience, to charge fully. It's a 5,000. 200 milliamp battery, and I got about a little over 20 minutes of flight time. The app does give you a warning at 30% battery. It buzzes real loud, so you know that around 17, 18 minutes of video recording to come back. And that's actually a lot for one of these quad That seems like a long time. Norm, what's a gimbal? So a gimbal is a stabilization system. There are three motors, the three axis gimbal. So if you look at this camera right here, I can move the quadcopter Ooh. as if it's flying in the air and that camera will stay still. The end result is you get a really stable looking shot that looks more like it was done on a boom or a you know giant film crew type thing than it does on you know a, a helicopter. And so obviously it's made so you can fly around and shoot video, shoot photos, and there's a lot of cool new features on the Phantom 2 Vision Plus. Uh, you have the transmitter on you right now. I'm not flying this one right though. You're not flying no, this no. one. Thank goodness, because yeah. I would be very scared. The, the good news is we have Eric Cheng from DJI here to teach me how to fly. You've, you've been flying for about a week now. Yeah, and, and so we want to get you some hands-on time with this. We're going to run through some of these quick specs. Uh, it's one of the most stable and just easy to learn quadcopters I've ever flown. So, so yeah, I mean, the thing you said before was uh, that, that this is to those helicopters you get at the mall, like, Hey guys, I'm Will from Tested. And I'm Norm from Tested. Uh, we're outdoors today on Treasure Island outside of San Francisco. There's a giant statue behind us. With a giant lady's ass right but there. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about what I have in my hand right now and what's actually shooting this video right now. This is DJI's Phantom 2 Vision Plus quadcopter. Uh, now, we've flown Phantom 2 Vision quadcopters in the past. You, you flew one inside a big mesh net at CES this year. Uh, but there's something new that's happening on well that model and this model as well. Right, and you can see it in this model right now. Uh, DJI makes the Phantom. If you've watched that Superman with a GoPro video on YouTube, it was shot with one of these. They have the Phantom 2 model, where, which people can buy for around $700, and you can mount your own GoPros to. The Vision, which they announced earlier last year, uh, had a camera, but this model has a gimbal. Well, so the phone here, you can actually get a lot of telemetry data. You can see how high it's going. Right now, it's about, you know, 10 feet, 15 feet above us, this can go up to 1,000 feet high. 1,000 feet is really high. That's really high, and I think FAA guidelines only allow these kind of quadcopters to go up to 400 feet high. That seems more reasonable. That's reasonable and plenty if you want to get some good, great aerial footage. So, uh, on the control front, the controller is much more simple than your traditional RC aircraft. You have two sticks. Uh, this one controls the, the throttle, which is relative. Unlike the quadcopters you get at the mall, where you have to kind of find the hover port point yourself, uh, this one actually will go up and down. Neutral is hovering, and the copter is smart enough to stay in one location. Right. This is the big. This is the big advancement. There's GPS built in. If you look at the back, there are flashing lights. These turn green, and that means there's a GPS lock on the GPS satellites. That means we even take it up to 400 or 1,000 feet high. It'll 